so let's continue with our lesson so in the previous one we looked at steps 31 to 40 and in this one we are going to continue with steps 41 to 50 yeah so gradually we are getting there okay so to prevent a user from submitting your form when required information is missing you need to add the required attribute to an input element there's no need to set a value for the required attributes. Instead, just add the word required to the input element, making sure that there is space between it and other attribute. So, you know, the way sometimes when you are filling a form on the website and you leave out some required information and when you try to submit the form, you are told to provide that information. So that's what this required keyword is useful so it's an attribute so you add it to the input like so and with this attribute you don't give it any value just write required and that's it you're done all right so use the button element to create a clickable button for example you can write the button element and give it a text click here and this will create a button with a text click here okay so in this challenge we want to add the button element with the text submit below the input element the default behavior of click in a form button without any attribute submit the form to the location specified in the form section so in this case this URL here okay so we have done our form and we want to just add a button that says submit. So the way we do that is just add a button element. So opening button tag like so and a closing button tag like so. And then in between, we just write the word submit. Okay, so as you can see, we have our submit button here. Even though you added your button below the text input, they appear next to each other on the page. That's because both inputs and button elements are inline elements, which don't appear on new lines. Okay, so you see so far, anything that we've been adding has been appearing below the next the previous element so for example this one appeared before below the previous element same here so each is sitting on top of the other okay but with this when we added a new element which is the button instead of appearing below this input element it appeared on the right side now that's because these elements are both what we called inline elements so for inline elements, they appear one next to the other instead of one on top of the other. Okay. All right. So that's the default behavior, but we can change it if we want. Okay. So the button you added will submit the form by default. However, relying on default behavior may cause confusion. Add the type attribute to the value submit to the button to make it clear that it is a submit button. Okay, so as you can see, this is a button with the word submit. And the default behavior of that button is to submit the form, all right. But we just want to make it more explicit so that when we read in our code, we know exactly what kind of button this is. So the way we do that is to add a type attribute like so, and we give it a value of submit. Okay. Next up, we want to look at radio buttons. So when we look at our final page, we have these buttons here. These are what we called radio buttons. Okay, so to add these radio buttons, the way we do that is to add an input element. So these are these radio buttons are also input elements, just as this one here is also an input element so we add our input element 
once again remember that the input elements are self-closing tags okay and we want to give you the type attribute. so once again like i've always been saying if you want to add an attribute you write the name of attribute your equal to sign and your quotation mark and then you write the value of the attribute okay so in this case the name of the attribute we want to add is called type and the value is submit okay no the value is radio sorry <laughs> yeah so as you can see we have a radio button here all right okay so before the text input add a radio button with the option set as indoor okay so uh, before the text input add a radio button with the option set as indoor okay so let's see the hint your new input element should be above the existing input element with a type attribute set to text okay you have them in the wrong order okay so uh this guy here should be on top let's see the text indoor should be located directly to the right of your radio button you have either omitted the text or have a typo okay so we haven't added the text yet so we just write indoor and yeah so now our code is passing okay all right so we are making progress on the form label elements are used to help associate the text for an input element with the input element itself especially for assistive technologies like screen readers so for example you can have a label element so as you can see we have an opening label element a closing label element and inside the label element we have the input element in this case with a type of radio so this makes it so that clicking the word cut also select the corresponding radio button okay so let's see something here at the moment if i go ahead and click the word indoor this radio button is not selected okay nothing happens but let's see what happens when we nest our radio button inside a label element so the way we do that is to write our opening label element and then our closing label element so i need a forward slash here all right and then <clears throat> now let's click on this indoor text and see what happens you see now when we click on this indoor text our radio button is selected and that's what the label element did all right so that's one advantage of using the label element okay okay so for step 46 we want to look at an attribute called id and the id attribute is an attribute that's used to identify specific html elements so each id's attribute must be unique from all the other id values for the entire page okay so we can give an attribute of id to an element but that id has to be unique so we can give an id of a certain value to a particular element and give the same id to some other element on the page there are exceptions but for the most part it has to be unique so in this case we want to add an id attribute with the value indoor to the radio button 
when elements have multiple attributes, the order of the attributes doesn't matter. Okay, so in this case, as you can see, we have an input element here, and this input element has a type attribute of radio. So we want to add another attribute. An element can have more than one attribute. And what we have been told is that when an element have more than one attribute, it doesn't matter how the attributes are arranged. You can write whichever one you want first and whichever one you want last. It doesn't matter. So we want to add an ID attribute, okay? So like I always say, to add an attribute, write the name of the attribute and then the value. So in this case, the name of the attribute we want to add is ID and the value of the attribute is what? Indoor, okay? So we just added an ID attribute with the value indoor to our input attribute here. All right, now, yeah, so as you can see here, we have two indoor, sorry, two radio inputs, not just one. So we want to create the second one. Uh, create another radio button below the first one. Remember to nest it inside the label like we've done here. And this time around, we are using outdoor as the label instead of indoor. And then we also want to give the radio button an ID attribute with outdoor as the value. Okay, so first we want to create our label element. So opening label element and then a closing label element. And then in between it, we want to add our input element. Remember input is a self-closing tag. So we don't need any closing tag. Then we want to add an ID attribute with the value of outdoor, okay? And then it will also have a type of uh, text, no radio, sorry, a type of radio. And then the text of the label is going to be outdoor, just like that, okay? Now, as you can see, we have an outdoor We have an outdoor uh, radio input and then an indoor radio input, okay? But now, let's continue. Okay, so notice what's happening now. Both radio button can be selected at the same time, like so. I can select outdoor and I can also select indoor at the same time, okay? But want to make it want to make it such that selecting one radio button automatically deselects the other so both buttons must have a name to do that you have to give both buttons a name attribute with the same value okay so add a name attribute with a value indoor outdoor to both radio buttons so what that will do is that when you select indoor automatically you cannot select outdoor and when you select outdoor it means automatically you cannot select indoor so let's do that and see how it turns out so in our inputs we want to add now i'm going to show you a shortcut okay so on mac click option key and then click where you want to type and also click the second place you want to type so like this you see two cases blinking and then i can do this name attributes okay and then i will say my quotation marks okay so the way i do that is on mac you use you hold down option and then you click where you want to type okay and on windows you use alt hold down click and hold alt and then click where you want to type so like this and then click this the next place you want to type that way you can type at two or more places at the same time so i'll just say name 
and then I'll say indoor dash outdoor. Okay, so now our two, let me shift this to the right so that we see it properly. So this is our first radio input. This is our second radio input. And as you can see, the first radio input have a name has a name of a name attribute of with a value indoor outdoor. The second radio input also has the same name attribute with the value indoor outdoor. Now let's see what happens when we click on the radio button. So I click on outdoor. Check what happens when I click on indoor. You see, the moment I click on indoor, outdoor is deselected. And in the same way, the moment I click on outdoor, indoor will be deselected. So now we cannot click both of them. Your cut can either be an outdoor cut or an indoor cut. Okay. Let's continue. Next up, if you select the indoor radio button and submit the form, the form data for the button is based on its name and value attributes. Okay. Since your radio buttons do not have a value attribute, the form data will include indoor, outdoor equal to none, which is not useful when you have multiple buttons. Okay. So the way we want to handle this is that we want to add a value attribute to both radio buttons. Okay. And the value attribute we add will help us identify that this, when we are submitting the data to the database or wherever we are sending the data to, will help us identify that this data is coming from the indoor outdoor radio inputs, right? Because we can, there can be a situation where we have more than one set of radio inputs. So we need to be able to specify which one we are sending. Okay, so add a value attribute to both radio buttons. Once again, if you want to type at multiple places, you just click and hold option on Mac and then click and hold Alt on Windows and then click where you want to type. So I just click here and I click here. So we add a value attribute. And the value of this value attribute is going to be the same as the ID. So for the indoor, the ID is indoor. So we just write indoor. And for the outdoor, the ID is the value of this value attribute is outdoor, like so. Okay, so in this last lesson for this video, which is step 50, we are looking at what we call field set. The field set element is used to group related inputs and labels together in a web form. Field set elements are block level elements, meaning they appear on top of a new line. They appear on a new line. So like I was mentioned earlier, in HTML, we have what we call block elements. So all of these are block elements. So block elements appear one on top of the other, as you can see, one on top of the other. Okay, so all of these are block elements. And we also have what we call inline elements. So inline elements, instead of appearing one on top of the other, appears next to each other. So all of these are inline elements. They appear next to each other, like so. Okay, so we are told field set elements are block level elements, meaning they appear on a new line. Nest the indoor and outdoor radio buttons within a field set element. And don't forget to index the radio buttons. Okay, so let me just shift this one here so that we see what we are doing. So we want to add a field set like so so we had we add our opening field set tag 
then we'll add our closing field set tag okay and we've nested it the radio the label elements in between the field set tag now check what happens because we've nested these radio buttons in a field set they are now surrounded by this border here and then they are on their own line so the other element this input and submit have now gone to the next line which is below them and that's because we've wrapped these radio buttons with a field set and like we we're told earlier the field set is a block element okay all right what's happening uh sorry guys yeah okay all right so that's it for this one and uh, we'll continue with step 51 to uh, 60 in the next one all right so see you in the next one